Hi, everybody. My name is Natalie Yeadon, and I'm one of the co-owners and managing directors at Impetus Digital. Um, and uh, one of the things that we actually do at Impetus Digital is we build some of the best in class asynchronous and synchronous virtual collaboration tools. We help life science companies with virtualizing advisory boards, working groups. Um, we help them with uh, medical education, doing investigator groups, and a whole series of things. And since COVID-19, we've also helped companies with doing things like MSL and rec training and brand plan rollouts and a whole series of other things. But more importantly, at Impetus Digital, we really believe that everything starts with a conversation. When we have these big, hairy, audacious conversations with provocateurs and leading edge thinkers who are doing something that's truly different and unique, like the Curtis Cons of the world, who are doing things that are leading and bleeding edge, we can actually collectively work to positively disrupt healthcare. And that really is the onus behind this podcast, is that we want to start having these conversations, doing something different, deeper, and bigger, and going beyond just the pill, so that we can truly do something that is going to help with outcomes and to inspire wellness and flourishing over the sickness model. So one of these great thinkers is Curtis Kahn. We're so happy to have you, and I just want to introduce you to him. He is a very creative, customer-focused marketing ex executive. He has more than 18 years that he's demonstrated results, not only in the financial services space, but he's also been, interestingly enough, in retail in a series of customer loyalty sectors as well. So he brings a lot of really interesting expertise um, into the healthcare space. He has experience working in product and technology innovation, um, he has a lot of strategic business line expansion experience and process re-engineering, as well as doing mobile, online, and social network marketing strategies. He's also done a lot of work in terms of completing customer lifecycle marketing strategies. He is currently the CEO and the founder of a company that we're going to dig into today called BookChain. And it's a curated mobile and web platform that connects people with care, uh, caregiver services. And this is actually you know, for things like child and senior care. And he actually connects people with qualified, fully vetted caregivers really at the push of a button. So very, very exciting stuff. Welcome Curtis, so happy to have you on the show. Thanks Natalie. That's awesome. So you have a really interesting background and we don't oftentimes see people with the background that you have in retail and the financial coming into the healthcare space. So why don't you spend a couple of minutes detailing to us how you landed in the place that you did founding a healthcare company? Sure. So, my, you know, as you mentioned earlier, I did spend a little bit, you know, I think it's cl probably close to 20 years uh, in, in retail and finance. And uh, I left the corporate world, I would say probably about eight years ago. And I started uh, my first startup in uh, social media. And we were basically aggregating data um, with Facebook and, and Instagram and Twitter. And then uh, we merged my company with another organization. And one of the big pain points that uh, I had a loved one that was in the hospital and uh, she was getting discharged and we needed care. And basically what they said to us was, you know, here's a wall of brochures, go choose which <laughs> care provider services you want. And I kind of looked at it and say like, holy crap. So started picking up these brochures. Uh, it took about six to eight weeks to find someone and it wasn't a right fit and match. And I said to myself, how do we create a platform or Uberize healthcare in the sense that creating this technology where if you need someone, caregiver, you can actually simply go onto an app and actually book someone, choose the person you want, get the right match, right qualification, and eventually pay for that person. So that's what I saw originally to say, you know, getting into the healthcare uh, side of things where uh, my background was never healthcare, just to let you know, as you mentioned before, uh, I was strictly in, in corporate. And, and that's one of the things I said, you know, I, that's, you know, I came up with this paper concept and then said, I'm going to take this forward. And started looking at uh, raising funds. And that's how this whole concept uh, started off. 
Fantastic. And it's a fantastic story. And we oftentimes find entrepreneurs, especially serial entrepreneurs, they usually find some kind of a issue or a challenge in their own life's life. And then they go, how do I figure this out? And then and bring that, uh, bring that solution to the table. So what I think is really interesting here, though, Curtis, is that Book Jane is, um, has actually been voted in as one of the top four Canadian startups in 2020 on LinkedIn. So you're getting huge accolades for this. So tell us a little bit about what is it that you're doing that's different in this space that has given you that, that, uh, that particular label? Sure. So what we're doing is, is not different than what's being done before. It, it's how we do it. Um, it's, it's really about embedding technology and changing the mindset and how tech can enable care. Uh, I know everyone's afraid of technology. Um, one of the big things that we've been successful on in our company in the last few years was uh, the ability to onboard uh, thousands of caregivers. So think about creating a gig environment that you know, we, we, the, the biggest challenge that we kind of faced originally was when we first started the organization was everything was done manually and we wanted to automate the process. So at a healthcare facility, one of the biggest challenges they face is if uh, they need a, a resource, the, the time it takes to actually you know, fill that open shift can be anywhere from a couple hours to a day to, to days. So, so what we were able to do is to remove that into minutes. So that was one of the big uh, game changer for us as an organization where if someone needed a resource, you know, simply go online and uh, you know, choose the type of qualifications you're looking for and book that person and the job acceptance with it is within minutes versus hours and days. So that was one of the big game changers for us. Uh, and then the next part is the types of organization we currently worked with today. We work with some of the largest players in the industry today. So with a company, you know, being in the industry for a few years, uh, working with the top facilities and organizations in the country, that, that's also a game changer that, you know, people started looking at us as a, a force to be reckoned with that we becoming uh, a disruptor in the industry. Uh, keeping in mind at the same point is we are able to kind of scale fairly efficiently because it's all technology driven. Fantastic. So let's just say, for example, I'm a caregiver. I'm curious as it relates to Book Jane, how you define caregiver. And is there specific credentialing? Is there specific qualifiers um, for me to be able to come to your website, sign up, and now be this, you know, this, this um, open source, if you will, to get gigs uh, and to get jobs and to fill in some caregiver gaps? Um, how do how do you go about as a technology company to ensure that that person has the right qualifications? Yeah, so it's a great question. So uh, again, for us is you know if someone's looking for work. We 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 did do we do the traditional job job search where you can utilize Indeed or our website directly. Um, they download our app, and depending on the position, so we do have. Uh, we'll get into more details on this a bit later, but we do have from physicians, doctors, to registered nurses, to uh, registered um, to uh, personal support workers. So we have a list of different positions that's available on our platform. Uh, so think about you uh, applying for a job. The only difference is it's it's true an app versus handing in your resumes uh, manually or by email. Uh, depending on the position, you have to upload specific documentation. So depending on the qualification, there's documentation that's required. Uh, once those documentation is uploaded onto our platform, uh, we do do a vetting process. So depending if you're a registered nurse, we, we look at uh, the nurse's registration system. If you're a uh, registered early childhood uh, educator, we go through the registry as well. So we do have a link between those uh, uh, systems that we actually verify and validate. Uh, we do a manual process at the end where someone actually reviews the documentation. And if, if it's Natalie is missing a couple of documents, they will actually contact you and speak about what's required and what's missing. But we do a full validation. Uh, the approval process for someone coming into our platform could be anywhere from five business days to six weeks approval because we do extensive vetting. Uh, when I mean extensive, we do the same process that 
a long-term care facility or a uh, hospital will actually conduct. Interesting. So, so, so that's actually really important to know because um, so one of the things I think is an important question for people who are listening to this, who might be in, you know, the gig economy is going to be the new way of the future. Let's be really frank is, do you have these standing people, physicians, nurse practitioners, allied healthcare workers? Is it kind of a standing group of people where you have X number of people that are, that are, that you actually have people calling into, or is this a truly scalable model where you can go through this vetting qualifier process and have as many people that's considered one of those entities or those functional experts as is needed who are all tapped into is that really is that where you are today or is that the model that you're trying to aspire to yeah so so for us as an organization is um the 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 caregivers and the workers on our platform uh is is really a gig environment meaning that if I want to work on a Friday and only on a Friday, I have the ability to work on a Friday. Um, we do have workers that have multiple jobs at facilities, meaning long-term care. And this is a secondary position where they can earn additional income. So we are a true gig. So think about, uh, you know, I always go back and say, think about Uberizing healthcare. This is what we've done is if someone wants to work on a weekend to, to get, uh, to pay extra bills and they need those two days to earn an in additional income, they can turn a switch on and work for those two days. Uh, and, and within our platform, it's, it's first come first serve on the job. So, so yeah. if, I'm, if I wanna work at a facility with X number of kilometers, if I wanna work you know certain number of hours, you have the ability to choose. Uh, and that's one of the key reasons why I, I'm gonna use the word fulfillment rate. Our fulfillment rate is, a, in, is in the high 80%, meaning that those are the percentage of people that's picking up those jobs and actually showing up for those jobs at the facilities. And also the quality of workers is because we do a, a review process as well in our platform where uh, our, our clients actually rate you depending when, when the job's completed. So they're providing additional feedback real time to make sure that the quality and standard we provide is consistent throughout uh, our platform. To make it truly scalable, to have like really a scalable database of caregivers and probably every functional group you would probably eventually want to get there, is you probably have to build in smart algorithms that are going to do the qualification and doing the doing the assessments. How is that final assessment piece, like you said, that a true um, institution, organization, agency has to do? How do you scale that? really detailed people focused um, part of it. How does that part scale? Um, especially when you're talking about the immensity of a potential caregiver database that you could, could eventually have. Yeah, so we, we've done, a, our team's done a fantastic job, I would say, managing that. And, it, and again, this is trial and error. So this is, this is learnings. And I know one of the things that you and I talked originally before was uh, the experience that I brought in from corporate, you know, the, the real corporate world into the startup is following corporate processes in place, right? That's, that's a key thing that you, you definitely need. So one of the things that we've, uh, we've looked at is, first of all, our platform does the validation. Someone has to manually look at those documentation. Um, we have systems in place where, first of all, if, if a document is coming up for renewal, because each document has an expiry date, we're alerted on those documentation. So that's the first one on, on a compliance to ensure that quality and consistency is still there. Uh, the second part that we do too, is we look at client feedback on what's happening right now. And we can segregate that by, by location, by region, by city, by the detail. And we have a star rating. So if anything goes less than X number rating, that's, that's a notification that we need to address that immediately. Um, the other part onto our platform is, is training. We do consistent ongoing uh, monthly training programs. And we have a rating system in our training that if you don't receive less than 75% uh, of uh, the, the actual part, pass mark is you're actually blocked on our platform. So, so those are very fundamental things we do. So keeping in mind that we have a location where we've got thousands of workers on our platform, but we were able to scale it becoming more efficiently 
and again, I, I, I go to go back and use technology is how we utilize technology very efficiently that you, you're looking at some of the core things where we segment and we separate things where if it's a red flag, we look at that. And if it's, if it's a non-issue, we continue providing that. And then the next part on what we do is communication. Communication is critical for us to our, our database of caregivers. We consistently communicate on the do's and the don'ts and what needs to get done uh, real time because that's a core part. I mean, our, our caregivers is book chain directly. So they're representing our organization. Very, very good. So it sounds like you've got some fantastic checks and balances and quality assurance processes that are continually evolving and learning um, and building so that you can create this sustainable, safe model. Because we're in this gig economy, I'm just curious about your philosophical view on platforms like yourself, replacing some of the legacy institutions or professions that currently exist. For example, recruiters and you know other platforms like the Indeeds. How is a book chain coming through in this new gig economy of becoming the new employer or the new job application process where there's a potential bypassing of these other professions and other platforms? Is this something that you know, you're, you've kind of given thought to or what is, what is your thinking about what book chain is going to replace uh, and or augment in the future? Yeah, so it's not something that we, we, we've looked at. What we've looked at is how do we help our clients, meaning long-term care, retirement homes, or even hospitals, uh, be more efficient on, on staffing. So that's, that's going to be our core focus. And we really haven't looked at, you know, disrupting the traditional ways of, of doing things because we, we still use traditional ways on how to recruit, meaning that these are channels that you still got to use to onboard uh, caregivers or promote your, your, the business through these platforms. Um, you know, so one of the things that we look at is, is the labor shortage industry-wide. So it's a, it's a global epidemic that there's going to be a shortage of healthcare workers, not just in Canada, globally. And there's two parts of our business, which we, we haven't really spent much time on as yet, but what, we, what we're able to do more efficiently and effectively is to provide software where our clients today can leverage technology and help mobilize their existing employees. So think about it in a way that healthcare workers now at a facility can also have a gig environment, except they're an employee of that facility, accepting jobs whenever they wanna work as well. And what that is able to do is to, to provide jobs more efficiently and provide additional hours for the part-time and casual labor force today. So for, for our mandate right now is, you know, can we increase retention to a facility can we reduce the uh, operational administration time at a location? Can we help reduction on spend uh, using our technology? And then if, if they need the additional resources, we have the gig environment for those additional resources. Um, so, you know, when we start to look at, you know, technology in, 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 in that sense, we look at enabling and helping operate our clients more efficiently using the platform to move uh, healthcare workers. And then, then the end game is, you know, if we, can do, if we can do a really good job doing that, now we have the ability to provide consistent care at the facility level. I love it. I think it's incredibly ingenious. And I just want to linger a few more minutes on the gig economy, the gig component of what you're suggesting before we move into some of the standard employees with some of these organizations and institutions. How are you finding these gig workers? What is some of the challenges, the, the channels that you're using to bring people into book chain? So uh, today, today it's uh, SEO on our website today. So we do, we get thousands and thousands of uh, applicants on a, on a monthly basis. Um, we, we do have high visits on our website. Uh, we do have referral programs as well for existing um, caregivers on our platform. So referral programs is always a, is an important part. We do do uh, social media. So social media, such as more so Facebook uh, and Instagram is, is a channel for us 
um, to drive um, uh, acquisition. And we do use the traditional uh, Indeeds of the world type of platform uh, for driving that. And one of the big things that we also able to leverage and we're fortunate on this is uh, a lot of the schools that provides healthcare workers, we're entrenched with a lot of those universities or colleges uh, today that we do uh, work in tandem uh, directly with. Very good. So you're filling the pipeline. And I'm just curious as well, too, as you mentioned something that's really important. And I think we would be remiss not to understand the importance of platforms like the Book Janes of the world since COVID-19, which I think has really illuminated the dramatic shortage of skilled workers, especially when we talk about, you know, support workers and nurses and <laughs> we're hearing about shortages and everything and you can imagine that really, again, has shone the light on this, is how are we currently filling it in? I, I'm just curious about globally, and now that everything has gone virtual and we're talking about telemedicine and teleconsults, have you opened the door to global expertise and ideas? And is this really democratizing? How many of these one-on-ones or one-to-many types of care that is happening potentially through book chain? We, 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 we haven't as yet. Um, currently, I would, the way I would answer that one, it, it, there's a number of things that's in our roadmap that we're currently exploring. Um, so for us today, it, it's, it's trying to focus on our own wheelhouse, meaning that you know, we know for a fact that we're solving, we're not, we're not gonna solve this at 100% today. Uh, for us, it's trying to solve our clients' needs at you know, 40, 50% where we provide real value. Um, you know, you're seeing a lot of different things changing in the industry right now on uh, technology, telehealth. You're starting to see uh, large retailers such as President's Choice or Shoppers Drug Mart looking at implementing new platforms because of the client base that they have and everything is eventually going to be more of a virtual world. But you still need care, a care provider to look after someone. Uh, you can't utilize AI. I mean, there's so many things you can do, but you still need that human touch. And so that's one of the big focal points for us is, uh, you know, let's focus on the next 12 months on what we do really well. Um, make sure that certain components is in our roadmap um, today. But we're starting to see the, the niche right now where things are starting to change and you're starting to, you're really starting to see that corporations, which is the traditional model type of corporation is moving into that virtual type of facilitation of care or having the online doctors, uh, you know, looking at uh, expanding their reach into mobile apps for even monitoring, uh, you know, fall prevention is a, is a big part where, you know, we do have clients and facilities are testing different components on, you know, ensuring that if somebody falls, what happens and, and all the details on why, why that occur and how do you prevent that? Um, one of the biggest occurrence in facilities is falls, right? So that's, that's a big part. And you know, could, could Book Jane play an important part in that? Eventually I would say yes, um, but that's how we kind of look at the lay of the land right now. Right, it's fantastic. And like, I'm sure there's tons of things that could probably be added to your roadmap. Um, still lingering or double clicking on the, the whole COVID-19 piece and the incredible shortage of workers for, you know, the vulnerable in society, especially in aged homes. And, you know, we're hearing about that, you know, in Ontario and Quebec and multiple other provinces is what is Book Jane doing to help fill the void um, or the lack of people in that space? We're seeing and hearing a lot of provinces and um, bringing in or putting a lot of money towards the training of these individuals into these accelerated training programs. Is that something that is currently being considered by Book Jane as, as, as part of that kind of qualifier, you know, uh, um, vetting process where you're, you're kind of integrating the training piece of it and then, and then relegating people to specific postings? Or is that also part of the longer term roadmap? Yeah, I, I would say it's a mix of both. I think, you know, we are having conversations right now with 
the associations today on on helping. So I'll, I'll give you an example that that I can share that's public information. Um, so we did work with the Ontario Medical Association, and and one of the big parts we worked on is in case you know hospitals or LTC or facilities needed needed physicians or doctors, they had the ability to actually access our platform. So we were able to make a number of changes onto our system. And, and, and actually, we, I think we, we had probably in the first 48 hours about 2,000 doctors on our platform. Um, and within that, we, we looked at you know, different types of positions that we can offer, et cetera. For us right now is, you know, can we work with the association to be the, uh, I would say, go-to platform for one is the onboarding to ensure that registration and documentation uh, can be uploaded into our platform. Two um, is, is changing the mindset and how the traditional uh, application process works, meaning that you can actually now uh, tap into resources that's probably not within the, the same region where you can access additional resource. The next part is, is looking at different demographic of healthcare workers. Today, you've got a traditional demographic of a specific age. Could our platform now change the mindset of different types of workers where if they want to work at a facility, they can work, which is, I'm going to call it the flex type of work, but utilize technology versus the traditional way. So there's a number of things that we're looking at today. And we do see what we, what we have today outside of our traditional trajectory of what we want to do in the next 12 months can definitely make an impact in the industry. Uh, you know, simple things like being compliant, you know, our system is already in place to be compliant. Uh, our system, we do have systems in place for training on what's required. Uh, we have a communication module on our platform today where uh, training can be deployed, documentation can be deployed. Um, so there's a lot of things that, you know, we do see value how we can help uh, the organizations today. And I think it's brilliant actually that you're already building that into the infrastructure in the model because as we start to think about the longer term ripple effects of COVID-19 and the number of people who may get displaced, not only because of COVID-19, who might be in the retail and um, uh, you know, entertainment sectors, but also just because of the implementation of technology in general, is we're gonna be seeing opportunities for reskilling and skilling and you know, platforms like yourself and then being able to automatically insert people into gig positions is kind of like the, the, the best model you can probably consider. Is, is, that, is that sort of kind of the longer term thought process here about where book chain, a book chain can be utilized in the healthcare gig space? Uh, absolutely. The other part to us to in our vision is, um, is working with the typical brick and mortar agencies because they're, they're also in need of technology and, you know, onboarding of caregivers. And then, you know, could you utilize those that, that workforce at facilities as well? Uh, similar, again, creating a different demographic and the ability to ensure that you still need your qualifications, but, you know, ensuring that, you know, hey, this technology versus the, you know, the traditional way of getting those jobs. And if you're looking for additional income, could, they, could this be the, 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 the channel for you to earn those additional income? It might not be your primary position or primary job, but it gives you ability, but it also gives the ability where we can now have a different target audience to drive more healthcare workers into a platform from a very different vertical. Beautiful. So want to spend a couple of minutes talking about some of the key people that will come to you. We talked a lot about uh, individuals who are doing, who are the individual contributors, the subject matter experts, the healthcare providers, right? Either within the framework of a, of a comp, you know, an organization or somebody who's coming into this as a gig. But if we're talking about specifically of the institutions, so for example, a small clinic or as large as a hospital, how are they finding you? And if you're working with a typical hospital, let's just say, for example, in Toronto, what are you going to do for them? 
Great question. So for let's use the hospital as an example. So we do we do have a sales team today that would would reach out to hospitals or long term care um, as well. We are part of the associations of long term care. So we are known we, we actually recently won an award last year of uh, most innovative product in long term care. Um, so our awareness is increasing, but you know, it's, it's really about you know, having that sales channel, uh, speaking to potential clients. Uh, we also work with the um, association similar to like the uh, Ontario Hospital Association. So we're, we're in line as well, where we have a, a really strong relationship. Um, one of the big core values that we provide for the hospital is, is the resources that they need. So if, if they do have the ability where they need a registered nurse or a personal support worker, uh, they have the ability, which is it takes seconds and minutes, not even, uh, to to register onto our, our, our web-based platform, uh, and then have the ability now to choose. One is they have the ability to choose and select to say that this is the person that I want. They can book that person directly. So we're giving them the ability where that they they can see the resources that's available in that region, and that's something that they really don't have access today. They can see the reviews of that person. They can see their credentials, meaning that uh, the documents that they currently have today and how up to date they are. Um, and they can see how many hours they've worked in the past as well. And then one of the key values that we provide is they can create a dedicated group of workers if they wanted to, which in turns now provides consistency if, if the need arises. So, you know, think about it from a traditional way where I might not see that person. I have no idea what that person can do or feedback. We're providing that transparency up front, but we're putting it in their hands now that they can choose that person or choose a group that they only want to receive jobs at that particular hospital or floor of that hospital. So it sounds like it's very, if you don't mind me using the pun, uber customized for everybody involved. Yeah. Um, and so we're talking again about the hospital. So there's several things that go on in the traditional hospital that are very legacy based. One of them is in some ways, and I think COVID-19 has been a bit of an accelerant, if you will, of change and adaptation of technology. But we still realize that a lot of organizations still remain paper based. Now, suddenly you introduce this new technology, this new app this new way of doing things that is very digital. Tell us a little bit about some of the barriers and the ways that your company at BookJane has learned to overcome or teach or educate some of these, um, some of these institutions on being able to leverage something like yours seamlessly um, throughout a department. So I'll, I'll use a you know, real use case scenario. Um, long, I'll use long-term care and retirement home as an example, because that's some of our core clients today. Um, so the, first of all, how we started to, in, to get facilities on really understand the power of our technology. Um, I'm gonna use our gig based platform where if I need to fill a job Instead of, instead of those jobs taking eight hours or more to fill, our platform reduces that time to minutes. So they can see the difference between how a traditional way of making phone calls, emails, texting, calling number of different third party agencies, how long that takes to actually find someone to fill one shift. We reduce the hours, the time in, in minutes versus hours. That's the power of that, they're able to see the value we provide. The second part to that is the, the quality and how simple it is for that caregiver to accept the, the job itself. <clears throat> the next part, what we're able to do is we have a SaaS platform. So if the, the facility now, what, we, what we've done in the past is give them the ability to, to test it and pilot our, our technology. And then to see the data from facilities using our technology versus not using our platform. They're able to see the difference in, in a number of different uh, KPIs. So the first thing they're able to see is the reduction on the time being spent for their existing staff itself. Uh, the reduction on time where 
they're actually now leveraging their staff more efficiently, meaning that the jobs go out evenly versus now only contacting the people that you like. There's a very fundamental difference because the people that you may never select is gonna work at another company because they're not getting enough hours. So we're providing the ability now where people are picking up, care workers are picking up additional shifts now than before. So we're starting to increase the retention rate now at that facility. The next part on it is how our data and the structure works where it's extremely simple and the onboarding of this could be a day or less than a day to get, a, get a, a, an actual facility up and running versus spending a couple of weeks to try and figure out how, how the actual platform works. So we've done a lot of work you know, behind the scenes uh, on our technology. One of the things that may come up for an institution or let's just say a, a, um, a, a, an old uh, a, um, a nursing home would come and approach you about is one of their concerns may be about some of the legacy software or applications or tools that they currently have invested a lot of money in. And one of those could be staffing tools, the tools that they're already currently doing to determine shifts, et cetera. Tell us a little bit about what BookJane has done around interoperability, integration within old systems or completely replacing them. And what has been the appetite for people having to completely rethink the model? Are you having people outright switching? Are they using it in conjunction? Or are, are, you know, are they using some sort of hybrid in between? Yeah, so uh, most of the times, I would say 90% of the time is we're getting rid of spreadsheets and typical phone calls. Uh, we're not replacing existing technology. Um, and none of our clients or clients will want to displace platforms that they've spent quite a bit of money on. Um, what we do is provide a complementary system in place where one is we can integrate it to a system where if it's, if it's, you know, recent software, we can, we have APIs that we can integrate. And most of the time we would integrate into two systems, which is a HRS system or payroll system. Um, our platform is, a, is, it can be, is really standalone. So what we, what we say to our clients is if you use, if you have an existing scheduling software, you can use your scheduling software. The, the time you spend most of the, the days on is these open shifts and call up. And that's the beauty of what we do is it's a really niche place that we play that we're not really displacing technology to say, hey, you, you know, this is old software or software you've had before. What we do is displace is the, the administration time, meaning that the manual work that they do today, we remove the, the manual process. Yeah, I get it. It totally makes sense. And it's a really interesting niche place that nobody is kind of filled yet. So I can see how your company has done extremely well, especially since COVID-19. And there is this scramble for caregivers, especially in the elderly care space. And the other question really comes down and besides interoper uh, interoperability um, is, is really around what other tools you provide. So one of the things that you talked about was really around shift work and finding people to come in to do certain things in the physical space. Is that area of specialty for book, Jane? Or are you also in conjunction providing ability for people for teleconsults, telehealth, um, being able to book things, you know, if it's mental health or other sorts of caregiver is that an area that you're playing in currently? Is it part of the future plan? And if so, are you, and is the BookChain platform um, allow, or is it through the BookChain platform that people can have these teleconsults or do they have to use other sorts of software to do that? Yeah, it will be other sorts of software to do that. To, to do that, um, I would say probably in the next 12 months, there's things that you, you might be able to do on our platform. Um, and the way we look at the, the business itself is, uh, you know, we do have like different types of caregivers on our platform, but, you know, we do have the ability where if an organization called a telehealth needs a, a registered nurse, they can actually book a registered nurse on our platform to service their clients. Um, you know, that's, so those are things that we, we kind of look at, uh, within our platform itself, uh, you know, couple of things that we provide to clients, you know, we do 
provide we have we have we call the we call it the call out process that calls out to resources when available we have a module in place where if a client has a specific agency you know agency that they like working with or want to utilize that agency can be plugged into our system so this customer doesn't have to reach out the agency workers are on the platform directly we have a scheduling component where we can manage the resources at a facility manage the number of uh, clients in a facility and how many resources required for that particular location and then we have uh, communication so communication is similar in a way that it's a one-to-one -one communication they can do online interviews on a communication platform they can speak to someone virtual on our platform so those are modules that we continue to focus and enhance on but when we look at companies such as a uh, you know virtual telehealth or a clinic that needs a very specific type of resource that we have they can basically use the resources that we have for their organization and we do that today with some uh, companies where uh, they need uh, either a physician or a nurse uh, on, on their telehealth platform where they can book that person directly uh, from Bookchain. Very nice. So Bookchain does a really great job of merging gig workers or current workers within institutions and organizations um, with those, those organizations and really ultimately being able to fit people in very quickly, very efficiently, very cost effectively into specific shifts and work spaces and, and be able to do that. Um, so you can actually increase retention and uh, basically save time and money. But where does the patient fit into? Is there currently a place for the consumer, the patient, the person with the condition in this model? Or is this really a model that sort of sits apart from the patient um, and the patient really downstream benefits, but isn't there isn't really an entry point or a portal space at which the patient can interact in this in this um, in this process or this platform? It's it's a strictly a workforce platform. Um, we're we're looking at where you know facilities are using the the workforce to you know look after the patients. We're not into uh, the patient component is really about mobilizing their existing staff. So on the patient side, um, you know, we 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 can we are sometimes linked with platforms that look after patients. But as far as patient um, goes, it's it's strictly uh, focusing on the caregiver side. So you started Bookchain in 2016. So I'm just curious that the what I always like to refer to is before COVID and after COVID. What did the world look like for Bookchain before this pandemic? And what has happened since then? So, yeah, that's a, how much time do we have for this one? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I would say before COVID, we, we service uh, other verticals. So childcare was one of the verticals we service uh, before COVID. So, we were pretty much the number one provider for workforce for child care centers in um, Ontario. Um, and that was, a, that was a big part of our business. Uh, retirement homes and long-term care was also a, a really important part, but we had, a, I would say, a mix. When COVID hit, we pretty much lost most of that revenue on the, on the child care side. But the, the good news were we were able to make it up with you know, new clients coming on board where they needed the resources. Because if we look at our business today, stating that, you know, we're, we're a health tech company. Uh, I always go back and say, you know, during the worst pandemic of modern history that we know of, that our business grew because of COVID and it grew because of gaining more clients. And what we provided shows that it's a major need in healthcare. Um, so, so we saw a switch to that. The other part on COVID was, uh, you know, we, we were virtual before, but our entire business now today is virtual. So that's, that's, you know, I would say it's always a challenge that you're trying to get the entire staff uh, and team to be consistent. That's, that's always a challenge for any organization. Um, and then our team consists of our head office team. We probably have what, 60 employees. Um, 
that's always part of trying to, you know, ensure that, you know, there's that consistency meetings and, you know, when we start to deploy new clients is that's, that's always been, it's been a challenge because in the past, our entire deployment was at a facility face-to-face. We had to pivot on how we deployed clients virtual. So if a client had X thousands of employees, today we're getting all those employees online and uploading them to the platform online and deploying our technology online. So that's been that's been a switch um, as well. So there's been a lot of changes for us during COVID. Uh, the other part that was good for us, you know, during COVID time was uh, we were able to work with a number of associations that we never thought that we can work with before. So we, that's, that has been a key component for us in order for us to start to look at, you know, different industries in healthcare uh, and how we can service clients uh, on, on a national standpoint. Exciting. And, you know, yes, this has been a, a very, very challenging time for many people. But certainly there is a silver lining for a lot of tech companies like yourselves that have been able to leverage the groundswell of momentum. Um, so nice to see that you've also been able to help and assist in this, this very uh, precarious time. There's a lot of individuals, companies that follow the Impetus Digital platform, including pharmaceutical, medical device, biotech companies. I'm just curious as well as we think and project into the world of that space, uh, the needs around clinical studies, everything from clinical research organizations to people collecting patient reported outcomes and everything in between. And in light of the fact that there's issues around telemedicine and getting in to see people, um, everybody is equally concerned to ensure that discovery, identification, um, you know, getting all of these new types of services, medications, you know, even software as a, as a medical device, that we continue these clinical studies without a lot of interruptions and distractions. And those require potentially people. Could you see the day, or is this something as part of the book chain roadmap of expanding beyond actual healthcare and um, long-term care facility staffing into things like staffing for clinical research organizations and staffing for you know pharmaceutical and other kind of healthcare stakeholder companies is is that something of potential consideration and partnership i would say the answer is yes uh we are exploring uh certain um staying in health tech we are exploring opportunities right now um that we're looking at and you know, starting to figure out how do we, it's not really a pivot, but providing our technology to these types of organization where there is a need. So it, it is something that we are currently uh, exploring. And an interesting part of it is, you know, we've, I think we started opening up the awareness that there's got to be a need for something that what we do outside of health tech or retirement homes where you know, I'll use the pharmaceutical part or, uh, you know, different organization type is really looking at because, you know, it's not just a shortage of uh, healthcare workers. Um, there, there is a shortage overall people. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that's on the horizon for next year, but it, it's, it's definitely something that we're exploring. Beautiful. I love it. So there are so many exciting potential trajectories for book, Jane. Uh, always have already have done an immense job in the COVID-19 space and, and elsewhere and um, very exciting uh, news for your company being kind of rated one of the top four in the LinkedIn Canadian startups. So what are you especially excited about? What's next for Book Jane? So we've got, first of all, our, our plan is to dominate the Canadian market. <laughs> Um, we're getting there and we're now starting to look at U.S. expansion. So we do have a number of U.S. clients. So North American expansion is going to be critical for us in the next, uh, I would say, 2021. Uh, and then the next part is the, the enhancement. We're really excited about the new things that we've got on our roadmap for our technology. Some really exciting things. Hopefully I can share that with you in the next, uh, next few months, what we're launching. But uh, we've got some really cool stuff. 
uh, that's that's coming up that we're we're going to be that niche player in the market, and it's a uh, it makes us again continue to be unique and and you know pro progressive and innovative. So we're really excited about uh, where we're going now as an organization um, and what the future has for us. I think it's it's awesome, and I just want to say congratulations again to you and your team for doing some outstanding work and obviously of being of immense service uh, during a very precarious time, especially in the long-term care facility for a lot of our, our vulnerable population during the COVID-19. So congratulations to you. Um, for those of you who are interested in connecting with you to talk to you, to find out how they could potentially get connected as a, as a gig worker or as an institution that wants to do some partnership work with you, how can people get in contact with you, Curtis? Uh, you know what? Everyone can email me at uh, Curtis, C-U-R-T-I-S, at bookjane.com. Awesome. And we will also leave links to Curtis's company, Bookjane, in the show notes below, um, as well as his LinkedIn profile if anybody wants to connect with him. And I encourage you as well, too, to like this video, um, leave a, a comment, uh, subscribe. This actually enables uh, other people to see our content and raise ourselves in the algorithms so other people can hear this content. And feel free to reach out to Impetus Digital. This is what we do with our asynchronous and synchronous virtual collaboration tools. We entice, we encourage, we provoke conversation. And we get people to think beyond the pill, beyond the current business model, beyond the current brand, getting people to really think deeply about what healthcare is going to look like in the future bringing stakeholders together to have these big, hairy, audacious conversations. So again, we can all collectively work to positively disrupt healthcare. So please reach out to me or somebody at impetusdigital.com and we'd love to have that conversation with you. Thanks for all of you taking the time to meet with us today and to listen to our content. Thank you, Curtis, for a fantastic conversation and wishing everybody a wonderful day ahead. Thanks, Natalie.